There's no denying that for many, The Wrath of Khan represents Star Trek's finest hour. The film, with its fresh new look and bold direction, combined with its thoughtful character studies, managed to reinvigorate the franchise and undoubtedly paved the way for many more years of Star Trek. So it's no surprise then that when Art Asylum slash Diamond Select were looking to expand their very successful Star Trek line, they honed in on the movie era and in particular The Wrath of Khan. And this line over a number of different waves managed to give us a pretty definitive lineup of characters from the film. And as such, it's one of the most complete runs of the Art Asylum slash Diamond Select Star Trek line of seven inch action figures. So today for Star Trek Sundays, I'm going to be taking an overview of the entire lineup. So as ever, let's take a look at the packaging. Now, this line did run across a number of different waves, but they all utilize the same packaging. And as you can see, this is essentially a carded figure with that clamshell bubble packaging. The card back is very nicely produced. We have an image of the Enterprise coming through the nebula. There is that sort of purple and black colouring, again, representing what we see uh, in the film, which is fantastic. But it's very colourful, it's very attractive, very nicely designed. And in the top right-hand corner, we have the portraits of some of the most significant characters. We can see Khan, Kirk, Spock, and Bones. And this is done very, very nicely. And the actual bubble packaging itself, well, that is done in the style and shape of the Star Trek insignia. Meanwhile, on the reverse of the card, we have that space scene as a backdrop, that nebula effect, which is very attractive, very nice colours, and we have some images of other figures in the line. So we can see the first two series on here, and they're represented by production stills of the actors from the film rather than the figures themselves. And in the top left corner, we have a little bit of information, a bit of a bio about the film, uh, and you can see they've had a little bit of fun with this. It starts, of course, with Kirk's scream uh, of Khan, uh, and I think this is quite nice, quite fun. And overall, the Packaging and presentation is very nice, very displayable, and is good stuff. So moving on to the figures themselves and starting with the good captain, the overall shape and size looks pretty good, but there is something a little bit stiff, a little bit flat about the figure and its presentation overall. And I think these figures have a lot more in common with the next generation line, more so than they do with the original series line. And looking at the head sculpt for Kirk, uh, I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of this. I hate to start off on a negative, but it is a real bugbear, uh, because I think the sculpt is pretty poor, really. Something's gone wrong here, where it just doesn't look like William Shatner. Sure, there is a faint resemblance, but it doesn't do him justice at all. The dimensions of the head look a little bit too stretched, a little bit too elongated. The features look quite pinched, uh, <laughs> and it just... Uh, yeah, this is not a flattering sculpt at all. And I have to say, in my personal opinion, I think this is probably the worst likeness of Captain Kirk I have on any Kirk figure in my collection. On the plus side, uh, the paint apps are very nice. We can see a lot of detail in the eyes, the lips, the eyebrows, all looks pretty good. And there is a nice wash going through the hair to give it a bit more texture and a bit more of a lifelike quality. The body mold itself is pretty nicely done in the main. It does seem a little flat, a little bit stiff, uh, but there is some attempt to give us a few creases and a few ruffles uh, into the actual body, the tunic. So overall, this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. I like that the badge and the insignia on the belt have been sculpted in and painted separately. That is a really good detail. And once again, the paint apps are pretty strong. There's some nice detail on the sleeve, particularly on the cuff, where we have the ribbon denoting rank, and we can see the little uh, insignia on the top of the forearm there as well, which is pretty cool, a nice little detail to have. Now, anyone familiar with Diamond Select and Art Asylum Star Trek line will know they used to utilise rubber to hide articulation points without compromising the posability of the figure. That's largely kept to a minimum here, but it is there on the bottom of the tunic to help the legs move forwards. And speaking of the legs, we can see, of course, they've been nicely moulded, so they look quite fluffy <laughs> with those sort of flare pants that they have, which is quite cool. The boots, obviously, uh, at the bottom there. So this all looks pretty good. And we can even see on the, the piping on the side of the trouser leg there is accurate to what we see in the film. So this is very cool. So moving on to articulation, they do all have the same articulation scheme in this line. So I'll just go through it at once. The neck is on a ball joint, so it can look from side to side. It can look up and down and it can move right the way around. So it can kind of wobble from side to side as well. So there's plenty of articulation in the head, which is great stuff. Now there is a ball joint in the shoulder, but it's not got a huge range of motion. It kind of comes out to the side a little bit, but not as much as you might hope. That said, it is a very smooth action and it does look fairly seamless, which is 
is good. This is supported by an upper bicep swivel and a single jointed elbow, which bends to roughly 90 degrees. And then at the end of the wrist, there is a straight swivel for the hand. So it just rotates 360 degrees. At the waist, there's another swivel to allow the figure to move from side to side. Now in the legs, there is a thigh swivel just above the knee that allows the leg to move from side to side. And there's another swivel at the hip to allow the legs to kick forwards and, well, forwards. There's another single joint at the knee, so again, bending that lower leg to about 90 degrees. And then at the ankle, there is a bit of a ball joint that allows the foot to arc up and down on a hinge, whilst the foot can also rotate from side to side as well. Now, all of these figures come with some accessories. Most of them have the same accessories, including extra hands, phases, communicators, while certain characters like Khan come with some extra unique pieces as well, including a bowl full of seti eels and a big seti eel. And he also came with a pair of tongs, not pictured here, uh, that he can put in his hand as well as if he was grabbing them out of the bowl. And here's a close-up of that so you can see what I'm talking about. And here's a closer look at that big seti eel. Uh, it's very nicely coloured, obviously fantastically sculpted, exactly what we see on screen. And I think there's a nice texture to this. So this looks pretty cool, a nice extra prop to have. And a quick note about the communicator. What's quite nice about this communicator is that it actually is articulated. There is a hinge there to allow it to flip up, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think the molding, the sculpt on it is pretty nice, but sadly, there's not a lot of color here. Now, I have the ever so slightly nagging sensation that this is ever so slightly out of proportion, a little bit too large to what we see on screen. So overall, I've got some mixed feelings about this figure. I think the actual overall sculpt of the body, the style of the figure itself, is pretty nicely done. The articulation is just fine. You can put him in plenty of cool dynamic poses. So I think this works in the main. For me, though, obviously, the major detractor is the head sculpt, and I can't really get past that. Okay, so moving on to Khan next. Well, the first thing to note is that the presentation on this figure is excellent. The paint apps are really, really nicely applied. He's definitely got a very dirty, roughed up look, which is brilliant. And I have to say, for me, I think the head sculpt has come up trumps. Uh, this is definitely a lot stronger than what we saw with Kirk. And I think the likeness here uh, with Ricardo Maltoban is pretty strong. Uh, so I'm very happy with this. I think they've done a very nice job of it. I particularly like how they've put the extra effort, given that hair a paint wash there to put the, the darker grey running through it. I think that really enhances this sculpt and uh, overall looks really solid. Likewise, the body sculpt of the torso is very nicely rendered. This uh, has a lot of detail in it, which I really like. It's got all the grooves in the collar, which is nice, but also there's little patchworks of tears and holes within the tunic and in the shoulders, which looks really good. And then it's been perfectly complemented with the paint wash. So uh, there's a number of different colors going on here to make it look really lived in, make it look really used and dirty. And they've done a fantastic job of that. As with the Starfleet characters in this line, he does have a little bit of rubber beneath the tunic there. So that bottom skirt is rubberized to support the articulation. And it looks pretty good. You almost can't tell that it's rubber. So it's quite nice to have the extra texture in there. And I think it works pretty effectively. And also, I really like the wristband with the, uh, the the chain that's going up his arm there. I think that's very nicely painted in, looks pretty solid and uh, adds a bit of interest. So I think they've done a very nice job of this all in all. And this attention to detail in the sculpting and in the paint apps carries all the way down into the legs, into the boots. And I think they've done a pretty fantastic job. We can see a number of different colours here, a number of different washes running through them. So it just looks really authentic and uh, they've done a very, very good job of this character. Now, I'm not going to run through the articulation scheme because it is the same as what we've just seen with Kirk, but I did want to point out that the neck articulation is a little bit compromised by the long, solid hair piece that runs down the back of the neck. So his head can bob forwards, but it can't really go backwards because of that hard plastic piece. So I thought that was worth pointing out. But overall, I'm a really big fan of this figure. I think they've done a really fantastic job with him. A lot of attention to detail. I really love the sculpting, and I love that they've really capitalized on that sculpting by giving it a nice paint wash as well to make it look really authentic and really, uh, really very real. Uh, so I think they've done a great job with this, and I have to say he's one of my favorites, if not my absolute favorite, in this particular line. Next up, we have Sulu, and of course, he looks very similar to what we saw with Captain Keg. My honest first impressions with this figure is that he seems a little bit too tall, almost. And much like Kirk, I think the head sculpt leaves a little bit to be desired. Now, I don't think it's as bad as the William Shatner likeness. However, this hasn't really caught the likeness of George Takai. I think 
this head sculpt's really a little bit too stretched, a little bit too elongated again, so it just doesn't look quite right. So if we look at the, the actor himself, he's obviously got a slightly rounder uh, face than what we see on this figure, so it's a little bit incongruous, it doesn't look quite right. Now, the detailing on the figure is largely the same as what we saw on the Captain Kirk, but there are some subtle differences. For a start, rather than having white cuffs and a white collar, he's obviously got the orange, which is what we see in the film, which is great. Likewise, on the cuffs and his little insignia on his uh, lower arm there is, of course, different because he has a different rank. So this is nicely done. And this carries through even into the piping on the side of the trousers as well. So I like this attention to detail. It actually helps to make the character feel a little bit more distinctive in the collection because the uniform is pretty similar across most of these figures. And I thought it would be important to give you a sense of scale to see how that has been approached in this line. So here he is standing next to the Captain Kirk. As you can see, the Kirk is slightly taller uh, than the Sulu. Now, I think there should probably be more of a height discrepancy between the two. I think it's actually more in real life than what we're seeing in these figures. Now, I may be wrong on that, but this doesn't look quite right. But nevertheless, there is definitely an attempt to scale these figures. And also, I did want to point out that although they have the same costume, you could easily assume they've used the same body mold, but they haven't. They're actually unique. They are different. Uh, you can see there's different ruffles, uh, different creases in each of the torsos, and they're ever so slightly different in terms of the dimensions as well. It's just very, very subtle. So then, moving on to the Chekhov, well, once again, he is, of course, in his Starfleet outfit, so this does look very familiar by this point, it does look a little bit homogenous. I think the head sculpt this time around fares a little bit better than the Sulu, but it's still not great. Uh, <laughs> if we compare it with the uh, an image of the actor of Walter Koenig, we can see here that, again... The actor has a little bit more of a, a rounder face than what we see on the figure, but this is definitely closer, so I think this is a much better likeness. I'm much happier with this, I can accept this a lot easier. Aside from having obviously different colouring, he's got the darker grey uh, for his cuffs and collar and the piping on his trousers, he also comes with a slightly different accessory which is the armband which can be snapped onto his cuff, onto his sleeve here which is pretty cool. And this again is nicely sculpted, nicely painted and helps the figure manage to feel a little bit more diverse, a bit more visually interesting on the shelf and in the collection. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this figure. I think it's probably one of the better ones in the line. He manages to feel pretty distinctive in this collection, which is a good thing, so I'm pretty happy with this overall. Moving on to Scotty, and the first thing you'll notice with this figure is that they have used a very different kind of mould. He's obviously a much bigger, more rotund uh, figure mould, which is fantastic, and again, lends itself to that sense of scaling. And I think this is one of the stronger head sculpts as well. There's definitely much more of a likeness to the actor James Doohan in this film uh, than some of the other characters. Now, it's still not perfect. Again, I do think that the actual actor has a more, uh, more rounded kind of face than we actually get on the figure. But that said, uh, this this head sculpt is definitely much more rounded than some of the others. Uh, it's not as stretched or elongated, and I can definitely live with any small discrepancies here. And I think it's very nicely painted, and we've got some different washes running through the moustache and the hair. So for me, I'm very happy with this. Now, as I mentioned, he does have a different body sculpt as well. So obviously, it's a much bigger sculpt. It's much more rounded, and overall, looks very distinctive. It stands out in the collection, and it helps break up the monotony of the uniformity of these figures. And finally, again, just to show how these figures scale to each other, here he is with Captain Kirk. So we can see, obviously, this is a wider mould. Uh, he's taller than the Sulu. He's not quite as tall as the Captain Kirk. So this all looks more or less in scale. It's not quite accurate, it's not quite enough, but it is an earnest attempt to get the scaling right. So in summary for this figure, I think it's one of the stronger ones in the line. I'm really, really glad to have him. He's actually one of the trickier ones to pick up as well. He's uh, certainly become hard to get hold of in recent years, but uh, he's a very good one. I really like the likeness on him. I think the uh, the body mold is appropriate and it definitely makes him feel a bit more fun, a bit more interesting to look at in the collection. But that's not all the figures from this line, no, because we also had a couple of Kirk variants. So here we have the regular one Kirk, so this is Kirk obviously in his overcoat, uh, which looks pretty cool. Now, this is, I believe, a hard plastic, so the articulation is severely limited on this figure from the body. But nevertheless, the sculpting looks really nice, the paint apps look to have been nicely applied, and uh, this obviously is a, one of his major looks, so a pretty cool variant to have. A few years later, though, they would reissue this figure with a slight uh, tweak in the head sculpt. So we have a yelling Kirk head uh, from that famous sequence. And I think possibly they've repainted uh, the 
colour of the costume as well. It looks a little bit brighter from some of these photos that I've seen. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this yelling <laughs> expression. Um, this can be very hit and miss with figures. Um, and you can also tell, of course, that the packaging uh, was very, very different. Uh, this is from one of the, the, the latter releases. They also released a more subtle variant of the Admiral Kirk figure, which is the Double Cross Kirk, where essentially he has the folded down tunic and the blood splatter. Otherwise, this seems to be a straight reissue of the same figure. The only thing that's really changed here is the torso in this figure. It's the same head sculpt, and I think it's largely the same accessories as well. Of course, I've skipped over one of the more important characters, and that is because I don't own him, sadly. Uh, but of course, they also made Captain Spock. And even though this was a general release figure, he's been very, very difficult to get hold of. <laughs> Hence why all these years later, I still don't own him. But as we can see from the photos, he does come with his Vulcan salute, which is great. And I think overall, from what I can tell from photos, having not seen him in hand, the likeness seems to be pretty solid in the main. And there was also another variant of both Kirk and Spock in this Death of Spock set. For the Kirk, this is essentially the double cross Kirk without the blood spatter on the chest. For the Spock, he has obviously got the unique props of the big gloves, and he's also got that deathly ill sort of marking uh, on his skin where the radiation is coming through. So he's more of a significant variant, I think. There's also a couple of other major crew members that I've not covered so far, and that, of course, is Bones McCoy and Uhura. Difficult to tell from production photos, the Bones uh, looks to have a fairly decent likeness, but it's, it is difficult to tell from here. But he does seem to come with some unique pieces, which looks pretty cool. From what I can tell from production photos, the Uhura seems to have fared fairly well when it comes to likeness. Uh, probably not spot on, but pretty close. And of course, I think she'll be a more interesting figure because she has an obviously different body mould uh, to the other characters in the line. So I think she'll add a little bit of interest to the overall aesthetic of the collection. But aside from the main crew, they also made a figure of Lieutenant Savick, which is a good choice. She is a very prominent, significant character, both in this film and, of course, the following The Search for Spock. She also has a Vulcan salute hand, which is pretty cool, and between the different colours of her costume, combined with the shape and size and dimensions of the scaling of the body mould, I think she would add some visual aesthetic interest to this collection and help break up, much like Uhura, to give it a little bit of flair, a little bit of difference to the line. And from the photos I've seen, the likeness seems to be pretty strong. And that brings us to the final Starfleet character, which is Captain Terrell. So this neatly rounds out all the Starfleet characters of significance in the film, which is fantastic. And of course, he sports a slightly bigger uh, body mould as well, a bit like the Scotty. So this is a, a little bit more interesting. It helps us diversify the collection again, which is good. So I think they've done a fairly decent job from what I can tell on the photos. And then finally, there was this SDCC exclusive Khan variant. Now, as such, he actually didn't come in a proper box packaging. He just came in a plastic bag. Uh, but the figure itself is essentially just a repaint with very clever paint apps to create that blood spatter effect all over him, which looks really good. But it does also look like, from photos at least, that he actually has a different sculpted snarling head and a different left hand as well. So there you have it. I think I've covered every figure that was released as part of the Rafa Khan line. In terms of final thoughts, I think this is a pretty nice collection. I'm a big fan of the classic films and I think what's nice about this line is that because they wear the same outfits in most of those films, they could represent more or less any of them. So it's just a shame really that we didn't get say a General Krug or a General Chang. Uh, it would have been very, very cool to add uh, to our collection of, of movie villains. And if I have one criticism of the Art Asylum slash Diamond Select approach to their Star Trek line, it was that they did tend to focus very much on the crew, which makes total sense, but they didn't diversify enough, and very often they put them in the very same outfits, even though they go to great lengths to actually make each one unique, but sometimes it's too subtle to tell the difference. And certainly in this particular line, I have to say, there's definitely highs and lows when it comes to some of the head sculpts. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Kirk and Sulu are particularly uh, ill-fated ill uh, in this line. But there are real standouts. I think the Khan and the Scotty are both very, very strong by contrast. And I still think overall, it's a pretty fun line to collect, especially if you have a lot of love for this film. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. And remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.